Putin is surrounded by an inner and outer ring of billionaire oligarchs in a mutually beneficial relationship. Imagine the economy of Russia as a large conglomerate in the same way Warren Buffett runs Berkshire Hathaway with various subsidiaries, Geico, Seas Candy, BNSF Railroad. Russia is Vladimir Putin, Inc., with Vladimir as chairman and CEO of the circle of oligarchs, some on the board, others who own parts of the Russian economy. People like Roman Abramovich, who used to be governor in Russia of one of the governed Russian states, worth about $3.8 billion. At least that's the amount of money we know of. Could be a lot more. It includes a $400 million yacht. We'll show you pictures of that later. The New York Yankees of pro soccer, Chelsea, and a $175 million set of four townhouses on Manhattan's Upper East Side. Now, he and others are in the crosshairs of the United States. Last night, we told you the most important thing was how the invasion would unfold. Today, you saw that happen and watched the American reaction. Tonight, the most important thing is will President Biden's bet that sanctions on Putin's inner circle will change his mind. For that, we bring in Elizabeth Schimfassel, who wrote Rich Russians from Oligarchs to Bourgeoisie and joins us now. Uh, boy, Elizabeth, if you're a Russian billionaire, are you worried tonight or not? You're certainly not worried if you're a Russian billionaire and you are in the UK because Boris Johnson just um, basically told them that they'll be fine with sanctioning three people, none of whom has any interest in the UK. It's a pretty pointless thing to do. So they, they were panicking the last days and pulled forces and did a lot of lobbying here in London, but yeah, and obviously it worked out for them. Well, I guess it's good to be a billionaire in uh, the UK. If you think about the billionaires who have ties to the United States, take Roman Abramovich for example. If the United States were to start seizing some of his assets in the United States, or Viktor uh, Rashenkov, um, also involved uh, heavily with Putin, any of these kind of people, would Putin even care? The most um, important people who I have actually more interest in the US and the UK have already been sanctioned. That are Viktor Wechselberg and Alek Deripaska, that was after the Mueller report was published. And for them, it was bitter. They suffered. Wechselberg has most his family in the US and couldn't visit them anymore. Deripaska has huge uh, real estate and business interests a lot in the States, and that was painful. But it was only two of the most important ones. If there was a certain critical mass falling under the sanction list, they would certainly, in that case, then uh, rebel against uh, what Putin is, is doing to them. But when they say they, they would rebel against what... Who has the upper hand, the oligarchs or Putin? Putin, certainly, there's no question. But he also needs the loyalty of the oligarchs. So if there was a certain number and them the lobbying collectively, that would certainly have an impact. Has that he started to happen yet or not? And he needs them to fight each other rather than being a combined force. So if there were enough falling under the sanction list, that would certainly be very effective. When you say enough, the three that Boris Johnson put sanctions on, that's not nearly enough. Obviously, the ones that are already sanctioned in the United States uh, isn't enough. What would have to happen by, what would President Biden have to announce tomorrow to get the oligarchs and then to get Vladimir Putin's attention? I think what could be quite a strong sign is to sanction one of the oligarchs that wasn't expected to fall under the sanction list. But it's very close. All the top oligarchs are very close to Putin. Otherwise, they wouldn't be top oligarchs. If that happened, I think there would be a shockwave going through the, um, uh, the, the, the ranks of rich Russians, and that would certainly make a difference. Economic sanctions are a tricky thing. After the annexation of Crimea in 2014, they worked in a way that Putin could easily use them uh, for an effect that there was a rallying behind the flag, blaming the West, putting all the, uh, the blame onto the West and having a kind of a populist strong effect for Putin to get stronger. 
but that will work now after the population has suffered for quite a long time and uh, uh, have a more suffering economy. It's a different question, but nevertheless, there is a certain sign and, and message in economic sanctions that can well work um, against the idea and the yeah. goal of uh, that sanctions. Well, you, have. Make, you make a great point that if it, if it goes against somebody who is unexpected, that might change things. Um, so far, President Biden hasn't shown the willingness to do things that are unexpected. It's been sort of what Vladimir Putin has priced in. Elizabeth, thank you. It's a fascinating book, and um, your expertise on this is going to uh, prove useful over the next uh, few months. It was good to see you. Thank you. Stunning how much money is out there. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.